even though um, like we, we do get quite a bit and it's enough, sometimes it's not enough and you're like scraping your five dollars kind of thing for the next week to be able to get lunch. We are yet to talk exclusively to students on this road trip. We're in Dunedin today, so what better opportunity to do that? There have been a few policies aimed directly at students. Labour, for instance, is promising three years of free post-secondary education. NZ First will give free tertiary education as well, but only on the condition students stick around and work in New Zealand. The Opportunities Party wants to give a no-strings-attached 200 bucks a week to 18 to 23-year-olds, and every major political party agrees living costs or student allowances need to be raised in some respect. We're going to ask students on campus today what issues they care about heading into the election and what policies have impressed them the most. There's been a quite a bit of talk about the child poverty issues and being a law student we're kind of exposed to that quite a bit and especially with all the new legislations that they're kind of looking at bringing through um, and it is a massive area in New Zealand that needs to be targeted that's kind of just shoved under the carpet. The housing crisis in Auckland is pushing an enormous amount of people into the street at the moment and it's spreading elsewhere so I mean Anything that could make a pretty substantive um, increase in the amount of housing and also you know, let the air out of the housing market. A little bit along the capital gains tax and that sort of thing because it's got a lot to do with how well our economy runs and whether businesses think they have a good future here. Um, and it is something that I think Labour struggles to really talk about properly, whereas usually I would be definitely or more on the leftist side. I just have an issue with how they're talking about their working group and they don't have any solid numbers for us yet. I think there's 40 million displaced people in the world and I mean we take 500 or 750 a year. I mean, it's nothing, I think we need to be taking way more. It's doing our part really. We care about a lot of green issues, so um, pollution and waters and um, making sure our waters are clean for future generations. The labour taxing of uh, water is quite good, um, but then I sort of worry about how that would affect um, farmers in the Canterbury region as well for irrigation and stuff. Mainly probably the environmental side of things, like I think there's a massive issue with the amount of water probably we're using and the agricultural effects that we're having that are, I don't know, negatively, negatively affecting the environment, so that's a main issue. And I guess it's quite shocking the child poverty rates as well, so it'd be nice to tackle that a bit more. Is there anything that's been aimed at students that's impressed you in terms of policy? Or? Um, well, I know Jacinda Ardern's wanting to make free tertiary education, but I don't know if I necessarily agree with that because it sort of will create an issue in what happens to people's student loans that have already finished university. So I don't fully agree with it, but I mean, it's a nice idea, I guess. <laughs> like benefits to students in like regards of like helping with like paying for studying costs and stuff like that. Not necessarily students, but I think the Greens welfare policy is going to be enormously beneficial to students without necessarily being you know, an education policy. Yeah, I mean you know, a huge increase to um, the amount that beneficiaries and whatnot are getting are just going to you know, make life easier for the bottom easily 20-30% of the country and that's automatically going to make life easier for a lot of students. The education policy that New Zealand First had put out, I personally think that might be a smarter way of doing it than just giving a blanket free year. I am very on the fence on whether or not we should be paying for our education. I mean, on the one hand, I do think it's really high and it is kind of hard to live on the money that we're getting from the government at the moment when you don't have, if you don't have any help from your mum or dad. Um, on the other hand, I don't think that it should be free. Sure. I think you should have to invest money in it and have to work for it if that's what you want. I think it would be better if they did the last year, they could have like more an initiative for students to complete their degrees rather than have like a first year free and then I think a, like, a lot of people don't uh, realise that tertiary is not actually what they want to do and then sure. end up dropping out and it's sort of like a waste of taxpayers' money really but then if it's like your last year is free then it gives um, students a time to sort of save as well for like... Um, the next few years. I've also been looking into the legislation changes surrounding compulsory te reo within schools. And what are your thoughts on the latter? On the latter, I am very enthusiastic about it. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you, Why do you think it should be compulsory? Um, I think the first step definitely should be making it compulsorily available in school, and moving on from that, if it's compulsory in school, well, for starters, I think. All three official languages should be um, compulsory in sure. school. 
not just Te Reo Māori but New Zealand Sign Language as well and I think that opening students and children to new languages also opens the windows to new perspectives and new ideas about cultures. Sure. We then decided to have a chat with Hugh Baird, who's the president of the University Students Association. We come from Wellington where there is an issue in terms of the supply of housing for students. What's, yep. is, is that a problem in Dunedin? Uh, well, it depends. I think uh, housing in Dunedin is sort of a bit of a different issue because you've got a lot of housing in really popular areas such as Castle Street and Hyde Street with the demands really high. Um, so it means that you've got people signing up for those flats uh, as early as April the year before. But outside those areas, it's probably not too bad. I think you've got a lot more supply than you do demand. And a lot of landlords are just realising that they can pick up the yield uh, for some pretty substandard quality of flat. Have you had many complaints in terms of standard of living? Yeah, we've had a lot of complaints. It's one of the big things that we have um, people complaining about is the nature of their flats. That you know, One, they're not insulated, and two, that they don't have a proper uh, source of heating. What about uh, living costs? I mean, are students getting by all right in terms of how much money they have? No, it's, it's also one of the biggest issues that we have here. And one of the things that we hear about the most is the fact that, you know, people are, are finding it ever, ever increasingly hard uh, week to week uh, with the amount of money that they're getting through loans and allowances, are working part time, are working a lot of hours. But then on top of that, they're having to, you know, get through their studies and all the rest of it. So it's coming at a cost. And each year, of course, the, uh, the increases in especially the rental prices around Dunedin, um, are making it even more difficult. I love you Dunedin, I love you world, I love New Zealand.